Hello, this is Mr. White, and this video is on derivatives and tangent lines. And presumably, we've already introduced the topic in uh, pre-calculus class, and you ha uh, hopefully, you know, at least half of this video will sound somewhat familiar, and this will be somewhat of a refresher of these concepts that you've already seen. But there hopefully will also be a few new things that you pick up that you either missed the first time around, or maybe I just didn't even mention at all the first time around. So let's get to it. Uh, I was originally going to do these two exercises in this video, but I'm going to instead do them in separate videos. They're a little bit too long and involved um, to, to cram all into one video, but look out for those. Uh, I invite you to do a little bit of research on your own, if you're so inclined, about derivatives and tangent lines. Uh, you, can, you may start with our textbook, uh, which has a little bit of background, a little bit of history on uh, what caused, why would... 17th century European mathematicians even concerned themselves with such things as calculating derivatives, aka slopes of tangent lines, of curves. Um, but consult the internet, uh, whatever, whatever resource you prefer. Get a little sense out of why do we care. We'll get into it uh, certainly in class, but I invite you to up front uh, find out on your own who cares about slopes of tangent lines. So speaking of tangent lines, that's one of those concepts that students always come into calculus thinking, yeah, I know what it means for a line to be tangent to a curve. And I'll grant you this, I bet, I bet that you know it when you see it. However, I would venture to say that you probably can't define it, at least not in, in any substantial airtight way. Uh, I think my favorite definition that I've heard for, uh, of tangency is that it's like a person with a big round butt standing um, back against the wall, barely making content, or, or butt up against the wall barely making contact, that's tangency. And sure, that, that brings to mind a, a compelling, you know, vivid image, but it's hardly uh, an airtight mathematical definition. And one of the things we're gonna learn throughout calculus is that we really need to have things well-defined. So, then when we get into a more serious attempt at a definition, it, it usually starts with somebody saying, okay, a tangent line touches a curve at one point. So let's use that as a starting point. Now, of course, I invite you to think about how would, you, uh, how would you define tangency based on where you're at in your current uh, mathematical education. Well, there's a curve and, okay, here's a line that touches it at one point. Clearly, that is not a tangent line and we know that this definition needs to be uh, spruced up a bit. So what typically follows then is, okay, well, it doesn't cross the curve. So where is that previous attempt if we think of this curve as a fence, um, and here I'm crossing the fence, well, the, the idea is, okay, with a tangent line, you're not crossing the fence. You touch the fence at one point, um, but then you stay on the same side of the fence. Okay, fair enough, but if our definition says that the uh, tangent line only touches the curve at one point, I then ask the question, well, let's say that the curve continues, and the tangent line continues. Is it, is it not touching at more than one point now? And then the student goes, okay, well, you know what I mean. I mean, it, it crosses somewhere, maybe far away from the point of tangency, but we're just talking about in the neighborhood of the point of tangency. And, and we can feel this definition is already starting to slip away from us. It's feeling a little bit uh, um, haphazard right now. And then I ask, okay, I got you. We'll, we'll only look in the neighborhood of the point of tangency, but what about a curve like this? And what would the tangent line look like right there? And then you realize, wait a minute, this whole idea that the tangent line can't cross the curve, wouldn't this tangent line just look like that? And does, does it not cross the fence, so to speak? So again, we, we, we understand, we know tangency when we see it, but as far as clearly and, and irrefutably de, uh, defining it, we've got to do a better job. So that's what we do with calculus. Now here is the, the grown folk definition of tangency. Um, and, and so again, whenever you're inclined to look at this and go, man, why do calculus books and calculus teachers have to make it overly complicated? I'd argue that based on the previous discussion there that no, this is not overly complicated. It's just something that we had to make a little effort, extra effort to nail down. Now, if you're looking at that definition um, and it looks familiar and you're thinking, doesn't that look like the derivative definition that we saw in pre-calculus? Absolutely, it looks like that. In fact, a couple pages later in our textbook, it, um, there's the definition of derivative, and yes, it looks very much um, like the definition of, of tangency. 
Um, I invite you to look at it and compare and contrast, but I also say at this point in the course, don't, you know, don't, don't obsess over trying to understand every little nuanced distinction between these two. I'd urge you to look more at the similarities between the definition of, of a tangent uh, line and derivative. Look more at the similarities and, and don't worry so much about the differences. For the most part at this point, you can, if you even want to think of these as largely interchangeable, that, that's fine at this point in the course. If you're going to focus on one of these two definitions over the other, I'd say go with the, the derivative definition. That's, that's the one that we're going to continue to build on for, for quite a while, really. So, again, if you're looking at that, you, you really want to understand. You don't want to just believe that and feel like you're memorizing it. You want to look at that formula and say, I understand every piece of it. I understand why it needs to be there. And I have a clear mental image of what's going on. Um, if, if you can't say that confidently, then, well, keep listening. We'll, um, recap real quickly here um, what all that means. So let's uh, use, for example, this diagram, this picture of uh, a parabola where f of x, in this case, just happens to be x squared. But let's just consider it some generic function f of x. And for this line, or this point a up there on the screen, this red point a, labeled a, Clearly, the x value is 1, but let's not think of it as 1 so much as, as just any generic value x. And what would we put here for its y value? Well, sure, I could just put y, but what's the grown folk notation that we're trying to get used to? Well, that's what f of x tells us, right? f of x tells us the y value of uh, these points. All right, so um, we want to find a tangent line. A, a, a line that's tangent to this blue curve at point A. So again, clearly there are infinitely many tangent lines here along this, uh, along this curve, but we want the one that is at point A. So that one right there, right? So how are we going to do that? Well, we need two points to determine a line. And where do we get that other point? Well, let's start by considering another point that's on the curve, and we'll call that B. So here's point B sliding along the curve there. And um, even though we, we know from previous discussion that we want B to be infinitesimally close to A, let me just put it here just so I can see it clearly. And what are we going to label this value? We're going to say, well, that's the same x value as, as point A plus a little bit. So we'll start by saying it's x plus a tiny change in x. And similarly, what do I put up here? Well, that down here, I went from x to x plus delta x. So let's do the same thing along the y-axis. Let's take this x and put a x plus delta x in its place. And that's going to give us f of x plus delta x. And so again, when you look at the, the, the limit definition of derivative, you want to understand what it means. And you want to have a visual image like this in your head. And you want to understand that what we're doing is we're simply taking the slope of this line. Now let's be clear, at this point it's not a tangent line yet. If I were to draw a line through those two points, it's going through two points on the curve and um, it's definitely crossing the fence. It's definitely not quite tangent, but it's, it's a starting point. It's an approximation. Um, so when I, let me go ahead and just bring the definition of tangent up here. Or I should really say the definition of derivative, right? And let's go ahead and um, implement that definition. So we're, we're taking the, the rise, the f of x plus delta x minus the f of x, and in this case for this function, which got pushed off the screen, but remember, this is just our parabola, f of x equals x squared in this case. So in this particular case, um, f of x plus delta x is going to be parentheses x plus delta x squared. That was this expression, right? And now we're going to subtract the original f of x, which is x squared. And it's going to be all over x plus delta x. That's this x value minus this one, right? Oops. So minus x. And again, you'll see in the definition that typically we don't bother putting this x and this minus x because they cancel each other out. Now, what we have right here is the slope of the secant line, the line that goes through those two points. And how do we turn that secant line into a tangent line? 
a, a, a line that really only touches the curve at one point, as problematic as that definition alone may be, touching at one point. That's where the limit come in, comes in. That's what tells us to take, um, to take those two points and make them as close together as possible. And that is what is our derivative, f prime of x. I'll go ahead and point out right now that you'll, you'll see, um, this comes up in one of the exercise videos, we'll see that another notation we use for derivatives dy over dx. And I'll go ahead and point out at this point, notice how similar that looks to delta y over delta x. Um, the difference is that when you take the limit of delta y over delta x, that's what we call dy over dx. So I'll elaborate on, on that more at a later time, but I thought I'd go ahead and throw that out there. So before I go any further with this algebraically, let's take a look in GeoGebra at what this looks like and make sure this is totally clear. So here we see a secant line. Again, it's clearly not a tangent line. It's, a, it's what we call a secant line when it cuts through two points like this. And right now, if I were to show the, the delta y and the delta x, I see that they are 8 and 2, respectively. And that, of course, gives us a secant slope of 4. Uh, as I bring point B closer to point A, I see that the, the secant line is adjusting accordingly. Uh, let me bring this over a little bit. Secant line is adjusting accordingly. And at this point, I see that now my delta y divided by delta x gives me a slope of 3. Uh, as I keep going, again, the point that what I really want is for those two points to be as close together as possible. And in fact, I'd really like them to be one point in the same. But the problem is that when I make them one point in the same, the line disappears because you need two distinctly different points to determine a line. Now, I could keep going in the other direction and the line reappears. But the point, the, the one line that I wanted is the one that I can't have. It's this one right here, and that's, it disappears right when it was within our reach. So this is where limits are going to help us out. Um, and let, let me show you this demonstration, too. I, I probably haven't shown this in class. I'm going to put a point up there. Um, let me go all the way to the end here. Let me put a point up there, point C. And notice that the way I've defined point C in this construction is that it's going to be lined up vertically with point B. But notice that the y value of c is 4 right now. Notice that the y value of c is going to stay consistent with the slope of the secant line. So um, let me get rid of the deltas there. So notice that the slope is 4 and the y value of point c, that point right there, is 4. Um, and as I start bringing point b closer together, again, c is staying in line with b. Um, and notice that at this point, the slope is now 3 and the y value of point C is 3. So again, I hope you see how that is defined. And let me go back to here, and here's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to leave a trace of that point C. I'm going to leave a trace of it. So as I bring point B closer, it's leaving a little trail there, or a trace. And as we get right to where we want to be, Again, this is where we see a removable discontinuity. So if you've been wondering for a while, why is it that we keep studying these functions that have holes in them, that have removable discontinuities? Here you're seeing it traced out before your own eyes. That the very point we're interested is in is the one that is missing. We wanted to know what the y value of that hole is. And that's where limits help us find it. So rather than ask the question what's going on at the hole, we just say, OK, what happens as we approach it? That's the job of limits. Okay. So we can see visually that it sure looks like the hole occurs around uh, y equals 2. Um, and, and we can see uh, numerically as well that when we look at what was happening to this slope, it sure looks like a compelling argument that, that our slope there is going to be 2. Um, and again, that would be the slope of our tangent line. But let's go back to the algebra and just make it uh, uh, confirm that beyond a shadow of a doubt. So, Let's FOIL that out. Remember, you are not allowed to simply try to distribute that exponent. You need to FOIL out x plus delta x times x plus delta x. And that is going to give us x squared plus 2x delta x plus delta x squared. And, and make extra sure that you're not getting x and delta x confused. I will point out that some books and, and other resources use h instead of delta x. I still like delta x, although I understand and I don't mind if any student ever wants to use h instead. That's, that's fine. Well, let's go ahead and subtract the x squared here. 
Again, all we're doing is rise over run. That's all we've done. And then we say, I want those two points to be infinitesimally close together. I want to see what happens as they approach each other. And that's the purpose of the limit. We see something good happens up top. We see the x squared cancel out. And let's go ahead and factor the top. Up top, we see that now that the x squared have gone away, we see that the top, there's a common factor. It's delta x. And if I factor it out, I've got a 2x plus a delta x inside the parentheses, all over delta x. And you probably know what to do next. We've got a, a basically a function in its own right here that has a, a hole in it. And how do we plug the hole? That's what happens when you cross out the delta x's, right? And now, when you just do your direct substitution and you plug in the delta x equals 0, now you won't get indeterminate form anymore because we've plugged the hole. So that's going to give us 2x plus 0, because I'm just plugging 0 in for delta x. Make sure you don't accidentally plug in 0 for x instead. x and delta x are two totally different things. And of course, that's just 2x. So you may sum it up by saying the derivative of f of x, or f prime of x, equals 2x. Now, what does that all mean for our example in our GeoGebra construction? Let's scroll back up a little bit and remind ourselves that even though I was labeling this a, point A as having a, a, just I was labeling it with just an x value of x, in this particular picture, we were dealing with an x value of 1, right? So here's how we would uh, note it, um, what's going on at that particular x value. If I want to know what's the slope of the tangent line when x equals 1, I just plug in 1 here, and I'll plug in 1 on the right side, and I'll get 2. And is that not exactly the slope that we were anticipating? I think it is. Pretty cool, huh? All right, so I invite you to go on to the uh, separate videos that have some uh, significantly more complicated examples that, that build on this, this concept of derivatives that hopefully you have a, a pretty solid understanding of now, but get more into the specific tasks that you're going to be asked to perform and some of the, just the, the messy algebra that we just have to learn to deal with.